Hey guys, David Clayton here with GuitarBreakdown.com and I want to welcome you back to the fourth installment in this lesson series on bending strings. If you haven't seen the other parts of this lesson series and you're watching this on YouTube, click the description below, you'll see a link. If you're watching this on TrueFire, because of course this is part of a TrueFire competition, just click the buttons above and you'll see the other parts of this lesson series. We are on the fourth part. We have two more to go, this one and the next one that comes out next week and I was sure I'd run out of ideas to doing this bending series. As I got further into it, I'm like, what am I gonna talk about? <laughs> but as I wrote more down, uh, you know, referencing other players and how they bend uniquely, um, I realized I don't, I'm not gonna squeeze them all in into the fifth lesson. In fact, we're not even touching on some of the most prolific benders like Jeff Beck. And I obviously should have, but Jeff, that, that's a whole series in its own. Jeff Beck bends strings like nobody else, and it's incredible what he does. And it's so vocal, and, and that's kind of what we're trying to get into here. We're trying to deviate from licks and theory and all these kind of things. And again, as we talked about earlier, it's about experimenting and just coming up with melodic, expressive things you could do on the guitar. So this week we're going to talk about uh, a few things from Guthrie Govin, Jason Becker, Marty Friedman, and Warren Demartini, uh, which they all do some really unique things in bending. So I hope you guys like this. If you do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, to True Fire's YouTube channel, and also please do vote. Uh, you can vote once a week, every Wednesday, all week long. And like I said, there's two more weeks to vote. So thank you so much for watching this, and let's get into the lesson. So for the first concept we're going to go over here, this is a Guthrie Govan style bending technique. We, we just put out a lesson package last week that was 20 essential Guthrie Govan licks. And within those licks, they're, they're really kind of long each one. They're like four to six measures each lick. So within there, there's all these little concepts and ideas that we break down and analyze so that you can incorporate them into your own playing. Well, this is one of those ideas. It's just a little tiny thing that he does and it's basically playing a scale or an arpeggio and then playing a note, bending a note, playing a note, bending a note, and it ends up sounding kind of like a sitar or it just gets this wishy-washy feeling that's so great. Now he uses a lot of, not a lot of gain, but he uses gain on this, so I'll show it to you like that, but then we'll clean it up and we'll talk about what's going on. So basically, it's off of a D major arpeggio and within that scale. So he's basically, he just bends the note here and it's really, really quick. And the technique there that's really cool, again, is you're bending a note, you're playing a note, then bending up to it from a note behind. Then playing a note, bending up to it. Right? And let me clean that up so you could hear a little better, maybe. It's just, especially when you do it fast, it's just a really cool technique. So what you can do is say, again, we're in D major, right? So you could just take it there and do the same thing. And all I'm doing if you want to hear the notes, the, the 10, 8, 7 on the B string are our notes. Then we're walking down 9, 7 on the G string, 9, 7 on the D string, and then 10, 9, 7, 5 on the A string. So that's your scale, basically. We're skipping that one note, the 6th fret on the G string. You could do that, too. the whole scale and now what we're doing is we'll play the eighth fret of the B string and then we'll play the seventh fret and quickly bend that up and down so obviously that's a half step bend then you go nine seven on the G string and you bend the seventh fret up a whole step and back down and you do the same thing on the uh, D string and it's a little harder of a bend, especially with the first finger, but if you do it quick, it's not that hard. 
and you don't have to be perfect with that pitch because it's going so quick. Then you do the uh, 10 and the 9 on the, on the A string. And again, that's a half step bend. So you have... And if you want to throw in that major 7 there, you can do that too. slide down a half step from the 7th fret to the 6th fret on the G string. And you could do it with every note. You're just going a scale tone below and then bending back up to that note. Just a really fantastic way of, instead of running down a scale or up a scale, you're interjecting these, or injecting these uh, bends and and it just makes it sound so slick as opposed to again just da -da 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 running right down a scale so that's the first concept now let's get into the second idea all right so this next concept is one of my all-time favorite licks or phrases or whatever you want to call it uh, i've been using this for years since i learned it at music school so long ago from one of my favorite teachers when i first heard him rip this out I just sat on the side and I was like, what was that? And it turns out it was a Warren D. Martini lick. Now when I play this, like with all these things we talk about, I don't play it verbatim. I use the concept and we'll get into how you could explore with this concept with this. But the lick is, again, it has a lot of high gain. It's a matter of sliding into a note and bending and then playing a few notes of an arpeggio or whatever, and then sliding back down, then bending, then sliding back down and bending. So it's a series of bending and sliding, and it just sounds really, really slick. So let me see if I could rip this off. <laughs> doesn't have to be used always in that aggressive way, but it's the idea of bending, playing a few notes, bend, sliding down, bending, sliding down, bending, and then maybe I end up landing on a flat five, which is kind of a like little tension note, and then resolving back. So what it is, we'll clean this up, and we'll put this in the PDF uh, that you can download so you can see how this lick works. But basically, it's just... It's, uh, this is, we're playing this in D dominant, basically. So it's a dominant seven arpeggio. Those are the notes, then these are the notes. Then we're doing kind of a pentatonic thing here, and I'll show you how you can mess around with this one bend a lot. And then we're ending on that note. So, that's your first arpeggio. You're just playing those three notes. So it's the uh, 20th fret on the E string. Uh, 17th fret on the E string to the 19th fret on the B string. And the first thing you do though is you bend that 20th fret up a whole step. So it's let me add just a little more. Let's get this on a clean tone. Right? So you bend that up a whole step. Then you go down to this position. And that's just a different position of your dominant 7 arpeggio. So you're playing the 17 to 14 on the E string and the 15 on the B string. And again, you bend that first note up a whole step. So you have... So you slide from that 20 to 19, or 20 to 17, so... But when you get there, you also bend that up a whole step. So. Then you just move down to that tenth position of pentatonic. So you're at 13, 10, 13, 10 on the E and B string. And then you slide from the 10th fret to the 9th fret on the B string, which gives you that flat 5. So the whole thing is... Now you could bend that up a whole step, that F note to the G note, right? 
and that'll be in pentatonic, and that'll be hitting that uh, the fourth. Or you could take that uh, 13th fret and bend it up a half step to the major third. So the whole step is, the half step is, which is really cool. Or you can actually play the major third on the 14th fret instead of playing that 13th fret and bend that up a half step to your, your fourth. So the whole thing will do it all three different ways. So the first way is, that's bending up the half step. This is the whole step. And now this is playing the major third and bending up a half step. Right? Just a really cool way of, again, now I was playing that really precisely where it was. But when you add the bent, the slides, you, you don't get all that articulation. So it's. So as you slide, then you bend and you don't pick those notes all together. Use a little bit of grit. All right, really cool thing, and do it in different keys. Do it in, it's the idea of bending, doing a few notes, sliding. Or you could just bend and slide, bend and slide. So you can take it and go. It's just bending and sliding, no, no riffs in between. So take that, explore with it. Again, it's all about exploring, and we'll move on to the next idea. Okay, so for the last concept in this lesson, we're gonna talk about a Jason Becker, Marty Freeman style bending technique. Now, Jason Becker is one of my biggest guitar influences from back in the day when I first heard him. Amazing guitar player, played with a band called Cacophony with Marty Freeman, and it was kind of neoclassical, shred. It was it was just awesome. But then he kind of broke out and started getting a little bluesier in his playing. Uh, he played with David Lee Roth. He played on one of his CDs and it was just really cool some of the bending things he did. And one of the ideas I think he got from Marty Friedman because Marty was getting into this kind of outside weird cool slick bending thing. Jason started doing it and started doing it in a different kind of way. Now the idea is Real quickly, we get locked into patterns, right? So we'll learn pentatonic patterns, we'll learn arpeggio patterns, scale patterns, patterns, pattern patterns everywhere. And it's great to give us foundation of what we can play, but the real thing is after you get locked into those patterns, you wanna kinda get outside of that. You don't wanna be locked to any one thing. And if you realize you can play any note, even in a pentatonic scale, all those, that little pattern, all the notes in between, you can play those notes. Now, some of them sound better to land on than others, and that's a whole different theory uh, discussion, but every one of those notes can be played if you play them as passing tones, as you play, uh, if you play them as really cool outside notes and then come back inside. So don't be afraid to experiment. That's this whole thing, especially with this kind of bending technique. Don't be afraid to sound bad because some of those bad sounds, they're not bad, they're just ear twisting and then if you bring them back in, it's like, wow, that's really cool. So enough talking, this is the idea. We're just gonna play a simple little melody. Right, and you could think of that as A minor pentatonic. playing that sixth note on the uh, seventh fret of the B string. So basically you have five, seven on the G string, five, seven, eight on the B string. But we're not gonna play that seventh fret on the G string. So you play five on the G string, then five, seven, eight. Now that's a cool little thing. 
sounds nice, but what if you bend from that seventh fret of the B string into the eighth fret? Right? And then you can do that too. You could play the actual eighth fret, go back to the seventh fret, and bend that up a half step. So. Right? And experiment with sliding and bending and doing things different ways. Um, so you could play that eighth fret, slide down the seventh fret, and then bend up a half step. They all sound slightly different and they feel different too. So find out what you like playing and you know experiment with that. Well now the other thing you can do is instead of bending that seventh fret to the eighth fret, you could go back down to that fifth fret and bend that up a step and a half. And then you have to walk the bend down if you want to from a step and a half to a whole step bend back to the note. Right? Just a real cool thing. But now, this is where Jason and Marty would do these things where they would take notes that were outside of the patterns or the scales. We're skipping that sixth fret, right? Well, why not use it? Just really a cool sound. Now, you can do that anywhere. Uh, if you would take the pentatonic scale, take the 5th and 7th fret on the G string, if you did something like that, right? You can bend the 5th fret instead of, right? Or you can go in between to that 6th fret. Just sounds cool and slick. Or you can even go down, you know, to this fourth fret. Just a cool, it gets that, again, it's kind of outside. It's like, wow, that was a weird note. But you don't sit on it. You just kind of use it as touch on it for a second and then move to the desired pitch. Really great thing. And you could spend hours experimenting with this. Take any lick that you know. Take the intro to Sweet Child of Mine and start incorporating bends with it and going outside doing little notes that aren't really, that would just sound awful and then you bend into the right pitch. Really cool thing. I think you guys will really enjoy experimenting with it. Uh, all these things, again, just experiment all over the fretboard. They're concepts. They're ideas. They're not licks. They're things to, you know, spark a billion different ideas for yourself and they're really easy it's not you're not dealing with whole new theory you could use it with any scale any lick you already know they're just little concepts and techniques so I hope you guys enjoyed this if you did again subscribe to my channel True Fires channel uh, also check out those lesson packages we have and please do vote share this too I'm trying to get in all the plugs <laughs> but really sharing this helps and voting really helps us we, we really appreciate it so and we'll see you on the last lesson, which is next week. And the last lesson, we're going to bring all this stuff together, and we're going to show you some really cool things. So hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next week.